Good morning, folks. We'll start below our feet. This won't break any records or show up on any significant quake charts, but a 5.9 near the Azores Islands hasn't happened in years. It's very rare. Anything over 4.0 in the Eastern Caribbean is unusual as well. Only get a few fives a year there. We're watching the Atlantic uptick as the Canary Islands took their first three-pointer in about two weeks. Top story today is at sea level, the buoy, south of Bali, my favorite. Went into event mode yesterday and let me take you back in time. About 10 months ago, the South Bali buoy began showing sharp drops in ocean height, hundreds of meters at a time. Then it was turned off for months. She's back on now and continuing the trend. Interestingly, this buoy was brand new when she started making waves. Only weeks earlier, she was not there. Fun fact, the area was already crowded with monitors. The flanking buoys were years old and both showed ocean height anomalies similar to the ones we're seeing now, leading up to the placement of the new buoy right in the middle think they were expecting something? Folks, yesterday's ocean height drop brings the total to near 1100 meters. Since we know that's not a giant depression in the sea surface, it can only be a rise in the sea floor. My only guess, and it's just a guess, is a massive underwater volcano that is yet to fully show herself to the world. Moving on to Cyclone Zane north of Australia, been about two weeks since our last major tropical disturbance. This is just a reminder, in the description box below the video you have every top level weather website I can find. Weather changes in real time, a once a day look won't cut it for you. Your local forecasts are the best bet and to supplement you can find forecasts and warnings for every corner of the globe in the links. I've actually just added three more today in case India is watching. National weather now linked for you guys too. Moving a step above the clouds to the vertical ionospheric delay. Red is not really a big deal, we expect it where the sun is cooking, but that is a large white area indicating increased electromagnetic activity at the location. A step higher to monitor the solar wind focuses on the yellow. The speed, a slight decrease from yesterday, that peak at the end is negligible. Density in orange is under 10 protons per cubic centimeter and temperature at the bottom in green remaining steady. When we come to the flaring on the sun, the sea flares are into mid-range now, but we still await a larger flare. NOAA and NASA are firmly focused on the two spreading active regions seen crossing our path here, headed for the western limb. Let's start down south. Their classification here is Beta Gamma Delta. Blue and red indeed, held within the same penumbra. Too bad that's literally all that's happening down here. Up north, I'd argue we do have at least one delta spot in back, with another potentially forming north of the leading spot. Whereas we watched their birth and lack of flaring since, down south cresting now is a beast that showed up mature and ready. These are the ones we tend to see in rapid decay when facing Earth. Remember folks, we don't want to see the solar kill shot, the big one, but Earth does need flaring and CMEs for a number of reasons. Looking at the umbral fields, You'll remember we called to watch for it opening to match the Saturn solar opposition, and it never happened. The red coronal opening now appears incapable of catching Earth at this point, so we're left awaiting the green. Luckily, there will be no confusion this time, no pop or tilt needed as she is wide open, and that darker vertical line turning in from the left, that's the opening of those umbral fields. So apologies for thinking I can read the sun's mind, got a little ways to go yet. Shots of our star, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.